Welcome to Faith and Freedom. For the next few minutes, we hope to inform, inspire, and encourage you as we discuss the legal victories and challenges to your fundamental freedoms and religious liberties. Faith and Freedom comes to you from Liberty Council, a civil liberties education and legal defense organization. Join us now as Matt Staver, the President and General Counsel of Liberty Council, explains the latest legal issues all across this country in the courtrooms of America. Liberty Council is winning the battle for your constitutional freedoms. The case has been argued at the Federal Court of Appeals, the first of its kind in the country, challenging Obamacare. A decision should come down quickly. We'll talk about it today on Faith and Freedom. I'm Matt Staver, founder and chairman of Liberty Council and dean of Liberty University School of Law. Joining me is Sean Akers, the dean of the Helm School of Government at Liberty University. Sean, uh, just a few days ago, we were talking, of course, yesterday on this program that I argued at the Federal Court of Appeals. This is the very first argument at the Federal Court of Appeals level in the country regarding Obamacare. And then, of course, uh, it will be the first case to actually have a written decision. And that decision should come down within the next 45 days or so, meaning that uh, we'll get a decision one way or another. And from there, uh, everyone believes that this will go to the U.S. Supreme Court. Uh, This is a significant case in that um, it is the very first time in history that the government has even tried to force people to buy a product. Even if you go back to the Boston Tea Party, for example, the king of Great Britain didn't have the audacity to force people to buy tea. He wanted to tax the tea that they otherwise wanted to buy and consume. Uh, If you can imagine that they revolted over that, imagine what they would do if the king of Great Britain said, no, you need to buy this tea. You must buy this tea. Otherwise, we're going to penalize you for not buying this tea. That's exactly, essentially, what we have here with this Obamacare. You must buy this insurance of this kind of brand or we're going to penalize you. You know, Matt, it's some of the review, when those of us that have actually gone through and read portions of that bill, some of that is staggering, by the way, because not only are they forcing or desiring to force you to buy, but they're forcing you to buy as a part of a pool with with protections with coverage, insurance coverages that you may not need. Men don't need pregnancy insurance, but you may very well have to purchase something like that so you can dilute the pool enough that it makes sense economically for the government to be able to uh, get into the insurance business. So what you're talking about here, uh, the implications of it are absolutely staggering for the nation to reach a point where the federal government wants to reach over into your life and to begin telling you not only that you have to buy something, but you have to buy something something that they've approved, and it has to meet their criteria, and it may not be something that's even good for you. Well, this it really is a massive redistribution of wealth among private parties, and that's exactly what this is about. But it goes far beyond the outer edges of the Constitution because the very first time in America's history, it seeks to regulate inactivity, people that are just simply observers. They're not participating in the health insurance market. They don't want to participate in the health insurance market. And, of course, they say, well, the health insurance market is unique because nearly everyone is going to have health care. Well, it's not so unique when you look at the food market because everyone is going to eat. And there are certain kinds of foods that are better and certain kinds of foods that are worse. In fact, uh, a Harvard professor actually testified in one of the hearings that he felt, in his opinion, the government could force people to join a health club to and and also uh, to eat uh, well, like eat vegetables and things like that for good health. Uh, because if you don't, you have the consequences on the medical and so forth. Uh, so there's consequences there. You know, that's where this goes. It really goes towards the centralized government system that our founders clearly rejected. You know, Matt, I saw it's funny that you should mention that because that, that's a, a quicker reality than some of us even realize. I saw just yesterday uh, that legislation on the state level is being looked at on whether the parents of overweight children should be taxed for allowing their children to become overweight. And the idea is exactly what you just said. This idea justifying government intrusion is that if you take an action in your personal life that somehow would involve some in- Entitlement or some form of service provided by the federal government, whether it should be or not, you're costing society, so you should be taxed. Now, that's a self-fulfilling prophecy, though, because you've got government stepping in and doing things that it shouldn't be doing anyway. I mean, the fact is, we're just we're just becoming centralized in in government's ability to control every minute aspect of your life. Well, and see, all of those uh, responsibility ideas and principles 
the founders understood, and they understood that that's not the role of government, but it's the role of people who are acting morally, and they're acting morally because they are immersed in religious principles, and from those religious principles come the idea and the notions of right and wrong. So you do act responsibly, not irresponsibly. If you want to eat, you need to work. If you uh, want to protect your property, you pr- you don't steal somebody else's property, and so you do the right thing. Here what we have is Big Brother saying, we're going to force you to act responsibly, and if you don't, we're going to penalize you. And that's exactly what is happening here uh, with, the re- with regards to this case. The implications here are far beyond health insurance, and so I would ask people to continue to pray. I mentioned in our program uh, yesterday that we had 76,500-plus uh, people that had signed up to pray for this case in just a matter of 10 days around the country. But I also got a text on the night before the oral argument, and this was from Israel. And it says, uh, Matt and Anita, Pamela and I are believing for the anointing of God's Spirit to empower and to articulate every word that he speaks through your lips. As we commemorate the independence of Israel 63 years ago, we stand here in Jerusalem where Yeshua, the King and Judge, rules on your behalf. Isaiah 61 is your mantle, and our team is standing with you in spirit and truth. You are establishing the law of faith in Yeshua HaMashiach's mighty name. Blessings, Joel and Pamela. Wow, Powerful, what an email. Uh, a nice uh, <laughs> text message to say that they were praying at that moment. In fact, they had entered into, the argument was on May the 10th, but they had actually entered into May the 10th before we did because they're ahead of us in time. So they were actually praying on May the 10th uh, in Israel at the celebration of uh, the independence of Israel uh, for this case here in America. You know, Matt, there's no telling how many prayers were actually going up. God calls his people to prayer at, at important times. And this one is more important than I think we, we realize. And uh, I know that when you were there, uh, you always have a great deal of peace about you. But how did you feel when you were arguing the case um, before the Fourth Circuit? Well, I felt very much at peace. Uh, I felt uh, very much at peace Tuesday, or, or Monday night before the argument on Tuesday. And uh, went to bed and slept uh, very well, which was, uh, you know, on, on big cases like this, uh, you know, you're in a hotel typically and, and you've got a big case that's going on. Um, it's harder to get a good night's sleep. I've slept really well going to bed knowing that people around the country and, and even now uh, this text around the world were praying. So uh, the weight of the case was taken off and um, I went and argued it on Tuesday. It was a very... Um, uh, inquisitive, I should say, panel. Uh, they asked a lot of questions. Um, you know, some of those, uh, you know, they're, if you've never seen an oral argument before from a hot panel, um, you, you'd probably be surprised at how many questions they, they had. Um, so they asked a lot of questions, and, you know, I addressed the questions uh, and wasn't nervous during that process. So I, I think the main thing, though, everybody knows that this is not the last stepping stone in the way to the final decision. This is the second of a three-inning ball game. First inning was at the district court. The second inning was at the Court of Appeals. But the big and most important inning is at the United States Supreme Court. And most cases don't have the opportunity to go to that third inning in the federal system. But this one, I think, will go to the third inning no matter which way it goes. And that will be the big determining factor. And uh, we believe that later this year, the case will be accepted by the U.S. Supreme Court and uh, argument in the winter uh, in 2012 with a decision no later than June of 2012. That's what my estimation is in terms of the timeline. You know, Matt, God gave this nation uh, one of the greatest gifts ever, and that's the gift of liberty, but it it cost a lot to hold on to it. It was a a guy named Henry Ward Beecher that said that that liberty is the soul's right to breathe, and when it can't take a long breath, laws are girdled too tight. If I've ever seen a law designed to be girdled too tight, when you can't choose or actually you have the choice made for you that you are going to purchase things, that you are going to do what the government says you're going to do, it shows just how important this case is. And the fact that you've taken the lead here and stepped up and have challenged this and gotten that challenge this far, this quickly, uh, I think shows that those prayers that you've been receiving text messages about are indeed paying off. Well, give us a call at Liberty Council and become part of this ministry as a prayer partner and a financial partner as well. We certainly uh, need and covet your prayers on this case and many other cases. And of course, 
Even though the oral argument is done, the decision is being drafted and written as we speak. So now is the time that you really need to continue to pray and ask other people to pray as well. And also become a financial supporter of Liberty Council. It takes a lot of uh, resources to be able to amass a case and defend a case like this. Uh, But we're not about to stand on the sidelines. We're going to be right there in the midst of the action. And while we're there, you're there as well. So become a partner with this uh, ministry. Go to Liberty Council's website, lc.org. That's lc.org. And when you go to the website or call 800-671-1776, ask for the book Original Intent by David Barton. That's Original Intent by David Barton. And also my book called Take Back America, a republished new edition of Take Back America. You have been listening to Matt Staver of Liberty Council. Our hope is to encourage and inspire you to stand up for your faith, family, and freedoms. We can accomplish a lot when we work together. Get informed and get involved today. Sign up for our free monthly newsletter, The Liberator. We will send it out to you free of charge. Stay informed with our Liberty Alert email update. Just click on the website at www.lc.org or call us at 1-800-671-1776. Tune in next time to learn more about your rights right here on Faith and Freedom.